Hello and welcome to AG Zone. In this video, we'll be discussing about mechanism of breathing and some terms related to the respiratory volume and capacities. So let's begin with the mechanism of breathing. Breathing involves two stages. First is inspiration and second is expiration. Inspiration during which the atmospheric is drawn in and expiration by which the alveolar air is released out. In this, the movement of air into and out of the lungs is carried out by creating a pressure gradient between the lungs and the atmosphere. Talking about inspiration, inspiration occurs when the pressure within the lungs, that means intrapulmonary pressure, is less than the atmospheric pressure, then inspiration occurs. Similarly, while expiration, expiration takes place when the intrapulmonary pressure is higher than that of atmospheric pressure so the air moves out now let's see how this pressure is generated the diaphragm and specialized set of muscles named external and internal intercostal muscles which are between the ribs helps in generation of such pressure now let's talk about inspiration. Inspiration is initiated by the contraction of the diaphragm which increases the volume of the thoracic chamber in the anterior posterior axis. The contribution of the external and internal intracostal muscles left, uh, lift up the ribs and the sternum causing an increase in the volume of the thoracic chamber in dorsal ventricle axis. As pulmonary volume is located in the thoracic volume which is airtight chamber, an overall increase in the thoracic volume causes a similar increase in the pulmonary volume. So an increase in the pulmonary volume decreases the interpulmonary pressure to less than that of atmosphere pressure which forces the air from outside to move into the lungs i.e. inspiration. Relaxation of diaphragm and the intercostal muscle return to the diaphragm or sternum to their normal position and reduces the thoracic volume and thereby the pulmonary volume. This leads to an increase in the pulmonary pressure to slightly above than the atmospheric pressure, causing expiration. Now let's move to some terms related to volume and capacity of lungs. So up first we have TV or we can say tidal volume. A uh, tidal volume can be defined as the volume of air inspired or expired during a normal respiration. It is approximately around 500 ml, means that inflow or outflow of air is approximately 500 ml every time. And a healthy human can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 8, ml of air per minute. Now next up we have inspiratory reserve volume. According to the definition, inspiratory reserve volume is the additional volume of air a person can inspire by a foreseeable inspiration. That means we have to put an effort to inspire more air. On average, a healthy human can inspire 2500 to 3000 ml of air, including the tidal volume. Next up, we have vice versa of it, that is expiratory reserve volume. Now according to the definition it is additional volume of air a person can expire by a foreseeable f expiration uh, and this is the tidal volumes plus the additional air a person expires. This is around 1000 to 1100 ml on average. Next we have residual volume. This is the volume of air remaining in the lungs even after foreseeable expiration. By previous two definition you may have assumed we inspire more and expire less. No, the remaining uh, that is inspiration minus expiration which is around 11 to 12,000 ml. This is the residual volume which always stays in our lungs which is non escapable air. Now you may also think that why we are defining these terms. What are their uses? So they are used in clinical diagnosis of various pulmonary diseases or they can simply be used to measure a pulmonary capacity of a person which can be used in clinical diagnosis further. Let's move to some more terms. Next up we have inspiratory capacity. It is the total volume of air a person can inspire after a normal expiration. This includes tidal volume, uh, inspiratory reserved volume, so if we combine these two, we get around 3000 to 3500 ml on average of inspiratory capacity. 
Next we have expiratory capacity. This is the total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration. This include tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume. So by adding these two we have around 15 to 1600 ml of expiratory capacity. Next up we have functional residual capacity. It is defined as the volume of air that will remain in lungs after a normal expiration. This include expiratory reserve volume and residual volume. There is one difference here which is expiratory reserve volume applies force whereas functional residual capacity do not apply any force it is normal expiration. So if we calculate functional residual capacity it came out to be 21 to 300 ml per minute. Next we have vital capacity. This is the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a foreseeable expiration. This include expiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume. By combining all these, this came out to be the maximum volume of air a person can breathe out after a foreseeable inspiration which is around 4600 ml. Next up we have total lung capacity. This is the total capacity of your lung that means how much air a lung can hold. This include your expiratory reserve volume, tidal volume or inspiratory reserve volume plus vital capacity or residual volume. By adding all these we get an average of 5500 ml. This is the total lung capacity of an average human being. That was all for this video. If you like this video, consider subscribing.